One of the wildest things is like how someone who is like a good looking dude who also has the capacity to be charismatic, who can just go so far down the rabbit hole and become this like gigantic weirdo. And I'm going directly into the devastating demise of Sneeko. 50 minute video by friend of the show, Jobbery. This one's going to be a fucking banger. I think I'm so special and better than everyone else because I think I'm smarter. My opinion has to be the correct one and I'm 100% sure of it. Just picture how narcissistic that is. Right now it's in full swing, but in five years, I hope it'll be gone. This side of me is my alter ego and he's named Sneeko. You don't even know what that means. Wake up. They laugh at us. Ha ha. They can't stop. You said I'm a misogynist, anti-Semitic. You need to talk about me for content. I feed your family. That's not even true. Nobody really talks about him. Let's be fucking real. And uh, I rarely talk about him. But he sure talks about me a lot. But we are going to be. This is one of those unique moments where I'm going to be talking about him because friend of the show, Jobbery, made it. The thing is, we all know this stuff too, but it's easier to stay ignorant than it is to be a truly good person. Andrew Tate and his consequences have been a disaster for the human race. Tonight on Piers Morgan Uncensored, one of the most infamous men in the world. Andrew Tate's misogynistic tirades have been viewed billions of times online. He's now been effectively banned though from the internet. For about three months straight- GA Preacher Man is two minutes long. Yeah, sorry bro. Dog, GA Preacher bro, I'm dying. The video is two minutes. Let me tell you something. You're not going to die if I don't watch the fucking Georgia Preacher, okay? I promise you, you're just not going to die. You're not going to die, okay? Calm the fuck down. Yeah, it's a two-minute video, and we skipped it, okay? I covered five hours and 41 minutes of politics. I want to go into it. still political content, political commentary, but that's a little bit lighter, okay? Trades, controversial rhetoric was borderline inescapable as all of social media became overrun by a bald millionaire with a weird accent. If you click this video, you're already well aware of who he is. I'm gonna have to try and do this video without getting my massive cock all over the camera. But we're not here to talk about the top G today. What I'm more interested in is exploring the online climate in a post-Tate world. While we may not hear much from the man himself these days, his ideas are more alive than ever. Resonating with millions of angry individuals, That's right. it's only natural to still Me. be feeling the effects of the man's presence even months after he was forcibly exiled from every major platform. Post-Tate world, post-Tate clarity. Mocked by some, Andrew Tate was and still is worshipped by countless others. His words are resonating with too many people for them to be ignored. Some of the biggest talk shows and internet personalities on the planet echo similar sentiments and poison healthy discourse through the means of bad faith arguments and blatantly false information. It's an epidemic and it didn't die out with Andrew Tate. He has always been replaceable. Andrew left a gap in the market that was primed for exploitation and after his inevitable termination it was only a matter of time before a worthy successor swooped in and took his place. An individual that just so happened to be a YouTube veteran himself. A man once revered by the biggest creators on the site for his impressive commentary and entertaining satirical bites who has now been reduced to nothing more than a frustrated conspiracy theorist shouting endlessly into the void on a platform only your racist uncle has heard of. Join me in documenting the insane same 10 year roller coaster ride of the most brazen, polarizing man on all of YouTube, Sneeko. Yeah. We're talking about we're talking about the the formerly uh, anti imperialist YouTube content creator, Call of Duty trick shotter Sneeko. I'm passing the torch to you. Keep spreading the message. While it's still relevant to talk about Andrew Tate, I appreciate you showing this. Tristan said he passed the torch to me. It's a lot of. Bro, I'm. <laughs> we got this. But first, this is so pathetic, bro. <laughs> bro, he's like, he's got tears in his eyes, dude. That's crazy. I want to talk about our now four time sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, One skipping more. it. Welcome back. Yo, chat, can I get a loser in the chat? Can I get some losers in the chat? We off the strike. We got banned on Twitter and we still here. But we got a lot 
to get into, bro. I didn't come across Sneeko until this past summer as I was researching my other- What the fuck is Luzon? Luzon? Why are they- why are they spamming Luzon? Luzon. What does that mean? Oh, L. Susan. Got Your favorite it. scam artist. I didn't know who this guy was, but I found plenty of L. videos of Susan losing. <laughs> That's so dumb. Blew up. And honestly, there was something about Sneeko's personality that made him hard to just ignore and move on from. I definitely wasn't agreeing with him, but I could still see why. Oh, I was pretty easy to avoid it, honestly. <laughs> like, I, I think I did a pretty decent job. I, I watched like one video, but I always knew that it was just like, you know, off brand, uh, off brand Andrew Tate trying to trying to do everything he could to like ride the coattails. It's pretty obvious. Why people found him entertaining. At that point, he wasn't completely on the Tate bandwagon yet. But as I watched the Tate flame ignite over the next few weeks, I also watched Sneeko go from being nuanced and authentic to instead worshiping the man's every last word. You can love each other. You can be prepared to take a bullet for her. Yeah. And still, fuck it. Jesus. that's what I'm saying. Word. <laughs> That's what, that's, it's funny because it's true. From there, Sneeko would parrot all of Andrew Tate's worst rhetoric, becoming infamous for making inflammatory, sexist comments of his own. You cannot provide anything other than pussy. That's all you got. You got a mouth, you got pussy, but that's it. No woman wants to be in an equal relationship. Women are submissive. They, they're here to nurture and we're here to provide. You know where women have the least rights? Saudi Arabia. They're doing pretty well. The more patriarchy, the more society kind of runs how it's supposed to run. <laughs> Did he just say Saudi Arabia is a good example of how society is supposed to be run? What the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> Yo. Yo, motherfuckers hate women so much. They're like, I'm a Wahhabi fundamentalist. That's an insane arc to go down. Why does this Nico move there, dude? <laughs> Holy shit. I don't care. Give me more money for my pussy. Whore. And that's what turned me and many others away as his true intentions became clear. But Sneeko's story starts way before this time, almost an entire decade, in fact, when he first joined the platform on April 9th, 2013. Sneeko's YouTube journey began a world apart from where he ended up, which is peddling anti-Semitic conspiracy theories alongside a domestic terrorist and burning every conceivable bridge while doing so. What do you think about the Jews? Do they control all the money in the world. Are they behind the scenes on most of these issues? Things were simpler in 2013. At first, his videos weren't totally unlike what any 14 year old would be prone to making. Coming home from school, he'd sit down in front of a mic and speak his mind while playing Call of Duty. It wasn't anything earth shattering, but it was how Sneeko got his start. Making a gameplay commentary video. Wow, what is this? 2014? Jesus Christ. Sneeko Kinde Balinthazi was born on September 8th, 1998 in New York City. It's been Bro, what did they fucking take this screenshot with? A toaster? What is that? Like, are you serious? Hard drive magazine? What the fuck, dude? Streamer critique streamer critiquing YouTuber. Yeah, I followed them. So they can fucking finally get a better, better screenshotting uh, machine, okay? Spending a little bit of time in Brooklyn, he and his two siblings were raised in New Haven, Connecticut by two parents who are still together to this day, an achievement he's always held to high regard. My parents are still together. Almost, like, almost nobody I know is like that. They've been married for 30 years. My dad has been fully committed to being a dad, and he was like that support that I think a lot of people don't have that really made me successful. Growing up in a pretty diverse environment, Sneeko described his situation as fairly middle class. Having poor and rich friends alike, he attended private school his entire academic career, never setting foot in public school a day in his life. According to him, it took a while to realize how much of an outcast he was. And I, it took me a long time to realize that I was an outsider. I didn't 
fully understand why I didn't fit in until I was like going through puberty and like they think I'm different. Sneeko is of half Filipino, quarter Haitian, quarter white descent and has frequently described how his identity has shaped his circumstances, attributing his place in school and many scholarships to his racial status. What kind of scholarships? Were these like grades or? No, they weren't grades. I think that there were minority scholarships. I could tick off a lot of boxes because I'm very mixed. So it's like the minority quota they, I check off like 17 boxes at once. Were you good at school? Like, did you enjoy it? I would say it was like up until like eighth grade, I was one of the smarter kids. I cheated on my SAT. I cheated on every standardized test. I Wait, how the fuck can you homework. cheat on the Sneeko and how the fuck do you cheat on the SATs? Wait, what? How? Have someone else take it in your name? Wait, really? You can do that? That's crazy. Nothing has ever been more important than crafting his own path towards success. Do you genuinely kind of feel proud that you cheated your way through no, I feel proud. school after grade eight? I, I think it's dope. I, I like I like finessing. I think that's interesting. I do my own thing. I don't work a job. I just got my own thing going on. It, it makes me, I guess I feel a sense of pride that like, yo, I didn't f the system. I did what I want. I did it my own way. A mentality that led him to drop out of college and pursue his own unorthodox ways of making money. Whether that was professional modeling or putting his free time towards making videos. It's not like YouTube had failed him yet. Sneeko got his first AdSense check back when he was still very young. Buying a pillow chair and taking great pride in getting himself there on his own. I remember getting my first YouTube AdSense check when I was like 14 and I bought this pillow that I could put up against my wall, like a pillow that you could lean up on like this. And I remember every day, like coming back from school and leaning on this, like, yo, I bought this with YouTube money. I paid for this from Call of Duty videos. I was so proud of that. This one item, I made that from talking to- One of the wildest things is like how someone who is like a good looking dude who also has the capacity to be charismatic, who can just go so fucking far down the rabbit hole and become this like gigantic weirdo. Okay, like Sneeko now obviously is uh, whatever the fuck happened to his brain, you know, uh, he, he's like this super weirdo, right? But he had a healthy family relationship, according to him. He is a good looking dude. <laughs> Stop saying cuck pill, dude. It's not just that. It, 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 like you look at his older content and it's, it just seems like he was like a sweet guy, too, on top of that. Could happen to you, Asant? Brother, I'm 31 years old. Like, I would need to be hit in the head with a shovel or something for my, my personality to uh, take such a drastic change or my worldview to change so dramatically. It happened to you just the other way? No, I think I still hold a, a lot of the same opinions that I did. Obviously, tweaks have been made. to a camera playing Call of Duty. That took so much by iPhone. I thought that was successful. With YouTube, Sneeko had an outlet to be himself. And although he didn't become a clout juggernaut until years down the road, his passion to keep moving was always there. Just the possibility that he could continue to expand his empire and positively affect those around him was enough to drive him forward on his creative ventures. Or in his own words, seek truth through funny. Holy shit, everyone, it's me, I'm here. What do people think of you? This is what we live for. It isn't how can I make myself better? It's if I go hiking this weekend, how many Instagram likes can I get if I take a selfie next to a tree? In November 2015, Sneeko uploaded what would become his first viral video, How People View You. A three minute monologue where he attempts to explain why people perceive us the way they do. Cutting back and forth between haircuts to make a point that we as individuals have more power to control what other people think of us than we may care to admit. Our image is everything and if you pay attention, you'll see the lengths people go to to maintain this. Virtually everything you do is an anticipation of how someone else is gonna react. When I have a buzz cut, I want people to think I'm a big tough guy, you know, big tough guy. When I got the quarter black half Asian fro going on, I want you to think that maybe I go to museums or something. I don't know though, should I post this? Maybe th people are gonna think I'm a tryhard. In all fairness, it was a pretty sharp video, if not for just how purely unique it was. Seeing such brutally honest self-awareness from a guy as young as him is what drove Sneeko to 
to a couple thousand subs, his first taste of real attention. From that point on, Sneeko would graduate from traditional gameplay commentary videos, covering issues from feminism to BLM to the 2016 election. Not what you'd expect from your average 16-year-old YouTuber. People are like, oh, you don't, you're not a feminist? Feminism is for equality, for equality for both genders, so why isn't it called humanism? Plus, it helped back then that any ill-informed opinion he had could be easily chalked up to a kid who had yet to experience much of the world. His opinions weren't always great, but they were still forming. He had some growing to do, but that didn't stop plenty of fans or fellow influencers from taking notice of his creative side. Sneeko's notable editing style is what got so many people in the door, and openly sharing his personal perspectives was what got them to stay. One of his then fans being Mr. Beast. How's it going, man? Hi, my name's Hugh Montgomery. I'm with the IRS. Uh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Do you have a couple of minutes, sir? No, I don't. Who not only named Sneeko as one of his favorite YouTubers, but had been there with them since the two were in middle school. I've been doing YouTube for a long time. So like when I first started doing Call of Duty videos and stuff like that, like we, we had known each other from comment sections when I was 14, 15. In a way, Sneeko has always had an urge to compare. Imagine if this, this guy found you first instead of red pill guys like Andrew Tate. I mean, I think I had the opportunity himself to Jimmy. They Kinda started at the that. same place at around the same time, making the exact same COD videos. Mr. Beast was always the first to leave a comment under Sneeko's vids, but today he's the one with 100 million subscribers. Right, yeah, I don't know if it's a good idea to be comparing yourself to the guy with 100 <laughs> no, million subs. It's, it is because we started at the same point. It's oh. very comparable. We no, you started he was as my intern. Fan. No, no. He, no, I started off, I was making uh. Call of Duty commentaries and he was like, first, in the comment section. While he's always shown appreciation for what Jimmy taught him, it's hard to imagine there isn't any jealousy at play. Especially when Sneeko himself has admitted to wanting to be Mr. Beast. I didn't want to be the guy in Mr. Beast's videos. I wanted to be Mr. Beast. In fact, that's one reason an internship Jimmy had given him fell apart in summer 2018. Helping out with one video before deciding the title of Mr. Beast's friend wasn't for him. He was fired and made a video exposing Mr. Beast shortly after. One that he deleted in a matter of minutes, but served as the final nail in the coffin for Sneeko and Jimmy's friendship. Going down two polar opposite paths as Sneeko continued building his humble following until finally... Sadly, you dogged on him and the crazy people in this community probably pushed him away. Bitch, it's not like he didn't have other opportunities. It's like he fucking went on... He went on Mr. Beast, had the bag and fumbled it like, and then immediately decided to turn on him. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of personal responsibility in this circumstance. He's a whole-ass grown adult, you know what I mean? Don't act like it was my community that fucking, uh, you know, pushed him away or something. When I first watched his video, I think it was like... When I first watched the video, I didn't even know anything. He was just in the chat. Uh, he He was literally in the chat while I was watching his video. And uh, that video just was kind of suspicious. It was just a, it was just sussy. That's it. You know what I mean? I didn't know anything about him, but the video and the perspective that he offered in the video where he was making it seem like he was impartial or whatever, the, the subway uh, questions about racism were, were just uh, odd. You personally are responsible for his downfall. Don't try to shake that blame. Oh, shut up. Do you think marriage is for nerds? No. Oh, no, I would love to be married. Marriage is definitely for nerds. I'm gay and unmarried. You think that men and women are created equal? Yes and no. This is the one of the videos I think we watched. Uh, Redshift, thank you for the tank of the subs. No. No. Uh, I might actually, I'm gonna have to like not answer that. Street interviews quickly became a pillar of Sneeko's main channel. Sneeko was already known for covering divisive subjects, but this was the first time he ever brought strangers into the discussion. And as it turned out, people enjoyed hearing- Man, this video came out yesterday. Shut the fuck up. It came out 21 hours ago. We didn't definitely watch this before. You're thinking of the Patrick CC video that we watched where Patrick CC blamed me for his downfall a little bit okay shut up shut up the video came out 21 hours ago bro how could we have watched this 21 hours ago hearing what the every man on the street had to say about whatever issue plagued sneeko's mind that day you're more attractive when you have money no not necessarily i've been dead broke and managed to get it on you <laughs> i haven't but i can do almost a lot of things as a man could do i mean if i work out enough in the gym and i build my muscle i'm sure i can pull up and do stuff that a man could do. I really like your perspective. I haven't heard someone talk like that all day. Yeah, well, thank you. 
surpassing well over half a million subscribers before 2020 thanks to his series he dubbed The One Minute Podcast. The format was pretty straightforward. Sneeko set up a booth on the subway and spent 60 seconds interviewing random passerbys on hot button issues. Asking questions like, do you trust the government? What do you think is the root of all evil? And are trans people real? What's up? Welcome back. We're in West 4th Street Station once again, and I'm asking people about the they, them pronouns, about gender, trans, all that stuff. Would you date a trans person? What? This is personally where I find Sneeko a little difficult to watch. I don't think all of these topics can be appropriately covered in such a brief interview. Like condensing a conversation on trans issues down to a 60 second interval where you don't really push back against incorrect or bigoted ideas is pretty dismissive and insensitive to the trans experience. Saying them is bullshit, bro. Because chromosomes, we all got chromosomes, right? Okay. For a reason, right? How are you just going to be a day and dumb? What is that? That's the two genders who want. How is that possible? I don't know. They say that. Who's they? It isn't really the productive, deep conversation you're... Yeah, I mean, but like that... That conversation lends itself to reactionary ideology because reactionary ideology is built on top of the foundation of previous reactionary ideals. That's why conservatives can be quick and and deliver commentary rapid fire because they can always be backed by uh pre-existing social norms that society has has made rigid okay working against that is always going to be a difficult endeavor that's it pretending it is especially when you keep making annoying jokes that fly over people's heads i'm from switzerland i think it was 1971 that they introduced voting for women so that was last good year like equal to cattle basically just cows oh, the good old days but the fans on the other hand huh. enjoyed getting such an up close and personal look at what the average new yorker thought about these things the appeal came from how raw it was even when people were speaking nonsense it still made for good enough entertainment in the eyes of sneeko's audience which ballooned to over 700k subscribers during that year for a while sneeko enjoyed the freedom of sharing his mind speaking with strangers on the street and letting his fans in on the more personal details details of his life. That is until things got weird. Tyra said, what did she want from the relationship that you couldn't give her? If you're gone for like more than three weeks, like, you know what I mean? Like it's time to, you know, I'm, I want to- Three I'm, weeks I'm, though. Come on, man. Three weeks is a long time. Three weeks is a long time to not see anybody. Like, that's a long time. In early 2021, Sneeko announced that he and his girlfriend had broken up after he cheated uh -oh. on her while the two were long distance. In the 11 minute video, Sneeko interviews her over FaceTime to discuss the traumatic events he put her through. And in retrospect, it definitely feels like I shouldn't be seeing this. Three weeks is a long time. Three weeks is a long time to not see anybody. Like, that's a long time. Bruh. <sighs> Honestly, the only the only thing you shouldn't be seeing is the top of the hour ad break. And I'll tell you what. Here's the woman ad break now. I give you like I give you like at least like two months, three months even. Two months. Nico was airing the very personal details of a relationship that probably should have just stayed between the two of them, especially considering how divided the comments were. Many fans thought this was Sneeko crossing a line, further exploiting the pain he instigated. Some writing, he put more effort into the editing of this video <laughs> than the relationship. God Sneeko damn. cheated during a pandemic. That means you had to go way out of your way. And Kinda most true. tellingly, also this true. channel feels like a movie where I hate the main character right now. The truth was, Sneeko Sneeko's content had been taking a nosedive for quite some time, pushing some of his longtime fans away with titles like these. Whether or not designed out of some kind of ulti- Wait, what was it? What was the title? ...fans away with titles like these. I have a confession, Cuties is my new favorite film. Wait, what the fuck? Whether or not designed out of some kind of ulterior artistic vision, not all of Sneeko's fans were having it, with one line of criticism coming from none other than D'Angelo Wallace. While maybe in the form of a short comment left over on his breakup video, these four words from D'Angelo Wallace would resonate with Sneeko in a huge way, as evident by his next upload. Good. Yeah, it was D'Angelo's fault that he he had a turn, not me. Okay, look at that jobbery blaming, <laughs> blaming D'Angelo for. <laughs> yeah, that is his fault actually. Yep, 
Forcing myself to watch D'Angelo Wallace, the impetus for a one-sided beef that still looks pretty pathetic to this day. We're gonna watch this video, Influencer 19. It's an hour and 10 minutes. I only saw it like 10 minutes, I was skipping around and I was getting mad. You don't have any redeeming qualities. Not only at his braces and the fact that he looks like a TikTok Lil Tecca. My ops are moving crazy. I don't know if you heard- Wait, what? Why is he shitting on him? He- Wait, D'Angelo looks great. What the fuck? Why did he go for his looks? It's so it, it's a very strange thing to to go for his looks uh, for everything. Heard of him? His name is D'Angelo Wallace. I'm not even one starting this beef. Got top comment saying he belongs to the streets. I don't know you. You don't know me, and you're judging me, calling me. See, Sneeko decided to take the completely mature approach of responding to a single comment with a 20 minute reaction to D'Angelo's then recent video, Influencer 19. If you've seen it, you'll know D'Angelo looks at an ensemble of YouTubers and TikTok stars who broke COVID-19 restrictions and were just generally irresponsible in the wake of the pandemic. Even today, it's a pretty sufficient time capsule into how the internet collectively responded to what was going on two years ago. Ago. Sneeko, though, uses this video as an opportunity to see you. You go for looks all the time. Yeah, I go for like cop looks. And not only that, but like usually, you know, I'm going for looks when it hurts real bad. You know what I mean? My point was literally that like D'Angelo Wallace is a good looking dude. So going for his looks seems kind of stupid. Like I would not, I would not fucking shit on <laughs> like Sneeko sucks in many different ways, but I'm not going to be like, dude, he's so ugly. You're so stupid. You're so ugly, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, you're, you're only going to come across like, you know, you're in the wrong because he's a good looking dude. To hit back at D'Angelo for the comment he left on his previous video, which to me already makes this exchange seem lopsided. You can't respond to a video that had nothing to do with the reason you're upset and not look insecure and desperate in the process. But that's exactly what ended up happening, as Sneeko failed to address even the most basic points made by D'Angelo, instead opting to make fun of his looks and repeat everything he said in a condescending, mocking tone of voice. Very clearly out Los Angeles guidelines that said Los Angeles County guidelines Los Angeles County guidelines we're in the middle of a pandemic his voice his face wait I wouldn't want to punch this guy in the face There's no part of me that wants to do that making the same joke six times within the first three minutes doesn't that remind you of the kids in high school that were in he went straight bully mode dude you should have put more thought and effort into it you know what I mean god damn he got, he got big mad. Student council. They'd be the type to like tell the teacher when you were late for morning meeting. I know you sat with the teachers at lunch. Remember when you had to run the mile back in middle school? I, I'm not gonna run and get my suit sweaty. He would raise his hand like, <laughs> um, does anyone know the binomial? Yes, I would volunteer. Okay, so in my homework, I wrote about da, 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 da. Before launching into some kind of bizarre tangent about different types of gay people. If your favorite influencers are at huge house parties during a pandemic. It's funny that he's shouting out just the white version of him. <laughs> Just another gay nerd with glasses who's probably talks the same way and snitches on people. These are the worst type of gay guys. Can we talk about that? There's a lot of like cool ass gay guy. The gay guys who be in the gym with the tank top and the mesh shirt. Those guys are chill as fuck. They host great parties. These are the gay people. Ironic because Tyler is literally the gay guy at the gym. Tyler is fucking svelte. Okay. For those of you who don't know, uh, he is jacked as a motherfucker people who don't know how to sing they don't know how to dance they weren't good enough to get invited to the musical theater performances so they end up just snitching and just whining. he likes his gay guys shredded yeah the kind of gay guys i like the good gays are fucking sexy they're hot they're shredded <laughs> how do you know it's on well uh we used to work out of the same gym the equinox west hollywood that's how i know for the rest of their life and they probably get fat by the time they're 28. They don't have good sex. I, they probably just finger each other. I doubt they even use dildos. I doubt- What? Okay, he's going way too into- Dude. He's going way too into how gay dudes are fucking- Holy shit. Okay, that's such an oddly specific type of insult. What is happening? I hope they get freaky with it. Put your <laughs> he said he knows. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's way too specific for him not to. Maybe he did some research personally. Who knows, you know? Does he know?
your open ass, you know what I'm saying? Like, be a good gay guy if you're gonna be gay. I don't even think D'Angelo has ever stated his sexuality. I mean, what is this? In the rare instances where he actually does acknowledge what D'Angelo is saying, Sneeko fails to accurately assess and argue against any of his points. Writing D'Angelo off is just jealous for not being invited to any of these parties. You just sound mad that you weren't invited. You idolize celebrities, you're really involved in the Kardashians' life, and it's more fun to trash them on Twitter than to admit that you're a fan. But what more can you expect from a guy who blames old people for giving themselves the virus and commands an unemployed mother to quote get her money up losing pay dealing with unemployment missing government checks new child care responsibilities you that girl whining right here like you're broke wah 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 you're broke get your money up why are you complaining about how broke you are and exposing I can't pay for my kids and I can't pay for my granddaughter why are you telling me get your money up and stop bitching about it if your grandparents were at risk like why don't they just stay the fuck home they shouldn't be on the goddamn plane doesn't make me suddenly okay now that they're still here that that deep cut that my dad might not have parents anymore i still felt it <laughs> so regardless of whether or not people are literally dropping dead from COVID-19. This video is so full of Sneeko flying off the handle and making dog shit rebuttals that to sit here and debunk everything would fuck? take way too long. If you want more of a step-by-step -step breakdown of how bad this response really is, I suggest you watch Kunk and Dastner's video linked down below. All you need to know for now though is that the cracks were beginning to form in Sneeko's image. Angelo, I think you're a jealous hating rat. Let's get in the ring. A weave. 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 Yeah. You want to box me, bro? Let's do a 1v1 boxing match. You say I belong to the streets. Yeah, I belong to the streets. We can rock this out on the streets and we can do it in the ring, bro. Let's box. Here was the... I just realized, like, he's been doing this to everybody, huh? I didn't realize that he was... I didn't realize that he was doing this to, like, everyone that... What, didn't he fucking get banned off Twitter because he was like trying to fight me too apparently I fucking didn't even know about it until later this insecure man child lashing out against another YouTuber who committed the cardinal sin of leaving a single comment on the video. The most ironic part was that D'Angelo never even responded, leaving Sneeko to look like the biggest idiot on the planet when his annoying- To be fair, that's the worst thing you can do to someone. When they fucking- when they make a YouTube video about you- and I know this from personal experience. When someone is making like a fuckload of YouTube videos about you, if you don't respond to them, pretty much it, it's, you know, and keep making YouTube videos about you, but that's it. Ben, I mean, listen, I'd love to fucking debate Ben, but at this stage, Ben Shapiro has transcended beyond uh, regular YouTube beef, I would think. When you have an institution, a media company that is uh, making you $43 million a year, Ted Cruz is one of your fucking commentators. It's a little bit different than, uh, I think, you know, shitting on someone like myself. But, you know, you guys can make that distinction, hopefully, in your mind. But when I respond to Ben Shapiro... It's not necessarily to get Ben Shapiro to notice me. It's more so to respond just like I would to any other chatter in my chat. Shitting on the misinformation and using it as an educational opportunity. There's literally no chance he's ever debate you just because he knows he doesn't have to attacks were met with radio silence. But at least we know he learned nothing about this dispute, judging how he had this to say a year after D'Angelo's hiatus. My anxiety peaked. I, I, there's no, there's no special way for me to put this. My anxiety. I wasn't able to do my job because my anxiety. You're not responding to Ben, you responded to his talking points? Pretty much, yeah. Anxiety. <laughs> I should say, I've deliberately not gone into detail about my mental health problem. My mental health! <laughs> but the truth is, I have really severe anxiety and depression. Oh, yeah? And it often leads oh. to suicidal ideation. Oh, no. Um, what the fuck? Yeah. Dude, what the fuck? Why is he shitting on him? This dude is, like, openly talking about his insecurities and shit. That's crazy. Never be vulnerable on the internet, chat. Holy fuck. Never do it. Don't do it.
big mistake. Maybe you stop thinking about that shit, right? Your life's easy. Comparatively, he's looking for attention, right? I mean, it is what it is. I'm sorry to say this weird one-sided feud wasn't an outlier in Sneeko's pattern of behavior. In fact, it was only the first of many dominoes to fall over the course of the next year, with things really heating up in 2022. That's fucked up. But I'm telling you, you know everything they fucking believe, bro. This is my private square. You cannot bring me here. That's the mark of a fight. Wait, why are they saying Hassan's dead dog in his chat, bro? What is happening? Look up Destiny Rooms Hassan's dead dog. <laughs> bro. Dude, I'm sorry. You're mentally ill, brother. You're so deeply mentally ill. If that's what you're doing on the internet, if this is how you choose to fucking spend your time, holy fuck, dude. Get help. Literally get help, dude. How do I read that? Dude, I'm a fucking chat sniper. You know this already. Is this it? I have the same pants that he does. Those are EPTM. I used to wear those all the time. No! Yeah, Sneeko's live streaming career was a trip. What is Brett Cooper's type? Lots of quizzes because that's basically what I do at home on my couch with my dogs. Starting around the beginning of the year, Sneeko's content went from art house style vlogs and interviews on the New York subway to holding himself up in his apartment and screaming until his lungs collapsed. Of course, the timing was extremely convenient too. Having just gotten out of another relationship, Sneeko had plenty of time on his hands to gather videos worthy of his on-stream reaction. Coinciding around the rise of Andrew Tate, it didn't take long for Sneeko to develop a liking to the top G. See, Seeing a bit of himself and Tate, Sneeko clung onto nearly every syllable that spilled out of this man's mouth, reacting to his most viral moments over on his second channel. Such a dildo to like top G is. So what the fuck? Hasanabi must perish. What? That's another that's I'm in a, I'm in another one of his thumb what is happening, bro? Dude! <laughs> God damn! Shniko, which would serve as the home of his VODs and stream highlights. His name gaining over a billion views on TikTok, Sneeko quickly realized how outrage and controversy made for the most viral, profitable moments. Something he would use to his advantage as his content grew more aggressive. Men objectify women. That's the point of going out and women living a lie. We go out so that women can look like objects and then we give them attention. That's what it is. And you're like, but women are queens and should be looked at for their personality no to fuck. you need to be an a woman needs to be an object of beauty you fucking idiot this is evolution this is basic biology your liberal bullshit is not going to forward the human race it's going to make men into pussies and it's going to make women stronger instead of making the original creative content people loved over on his main channel sneeko started reacting to videos made by other youtubers some of which criticizing andrew tate as more harmless left-wing creators served as particularly easy targets for sneeko and his rabid increasingly right-wing fan base left-leaning personalities like noah samson anna marie forcino and even Curtis Connor were all the polar opposites of Sneeko, who saw these individuals as fresh content. And wait, what? Curtis Connor versus Sneeko? By the way, Curtis Connor is not going to be coming here tonight, unfortunately. Okay. El No Hassan. No, I'm I'm happy to not be mentioned in this. Would tear into them to an unnecessary extent. Just look at her. This dude is 28 years old. This is what they want you to become. Oh, free willy. Like she's overweight and she's a white girl and she's Gen Z. I'm not telling you to judge anyone by their appearances, <laughs> but exactly like, you know what she thinks. <laughs> I'm not telling you to judge people by his appearances, but also I'm definitely telling you that.
What did you do to Curtis? You monster? What do you mean? My biggest, my most monstrous thing was I invited him to come on the broadcast, and he was like, nah, sorry, dog. I'm too big time. I have a wife now. I'm fucking married, bro. Get out of here. Hassan paid Jabri not to mention him. I may or may not have done that. <laughs> He's got a mullet and a mustache, and still, like, my 8% f***ing female audience is still saying, he's fine, but he's not funny. Bro, he, this is a f***ing nose ring. You got the same sword boy goggles on, and a trucker mullet, and this weird stash? That's what makes you fine? You look goofy. Every day, them in Brooklyn looks like this. Cover my drink. He doesn't care, bro. Nobody wants you. <laughs> look at your fat head. Look how fat your head is, that headphones and dent it. But chat, you, we have to be better than them. I'm living good because I show love. I put love out there, and I, I really, honestly, I focus too much energy on the haters because the amount of love in here is the reason any of this is possible as we saw with the d'angelo situation sneeko has never been the best at forming arguments why craft out a coherent intelligent response to what someone said when you can just call them boring or say their video is too long both uh, pretty ironic defenses coming from L. this guy these people are just genuine bots 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 anyone who's in a mall is a bot you're a bot bots bot bots you're a bot bots and I became a bot. Sneeko developed a tendency to take personal jabs at whoever landed in his crosshairs, going after the physical appearances of virtually everyone he covered, a strategy that would become Sneeko's forte, as he continued uploading videos like why twos think they're tens, and why ugly girls think they're beautiful. And look at those lashes, bro. Does that not look like something... <laughs> This is why we need to body shame more lip bro. Come. I hate her. Go, go, go. She thinks she's valuable. And you're a three. Bitch. You're a fucking three. She's the fat one. It's clear he had nothing. Holy fuck, dude. The animosity. The animosity jumped out. That's just like incel rage right there. Nothing else to offer besides making unfunny middle school jokes and unnecessarily punching down on oppressed groups. Who's doing these like unprovoked violent attacks on Asians? What race? Have you been paying attention? Have you looked at the statistics? Have you seen? I've been I've been looking at all these videos since it happened. Uh -oh. Like I've seen, it's been you the same. So you think it's black people? It's only black people. Uncomfortable truth: black people are more violent than white people. But it's not like he wasn't incentivized to do so. As we saw with Tate, this kind of reactionary content sells, especially a few months ago when the Tate brothers were seen as rebels against a status quo that had become too woke. All the f only thing the Tate brothers were reveling against is fucking normal hairlines, dude. Fucking got him. Let's move on. The wokeness that's been infecting in these movies. Can't you tell like all the trans movies? They're they're trying to put an agenda. And yeah, dude, there's so much trans movies out there. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> where <laughs> motherfuckers like, yo, there's so many trans movies. Why do I keep watching trans porn? It's crazy. I go to Pornhub. It's all trans porn, man. That's really fucked up. Where where are the trans movies? <laughs> You got to be going out of your fucking way to find these trans movies that are all over the place. You know what I mean? There are legit like 12 Transformers movies. Okay, you got me on that one. Everything we watch, can't you feel it? Sneeko was expressing a frustration felt by millions. And although he wasn't saying anything particularly smart or profound. This guy's a misogynist. You're toxic and prop. He's like, <laughs> he's like, man. The, the trans agenda has gone too far. My entire search history is trans porn. It's fucked up. How did they get there? How did these, how did these videos get in my search bar, man? What's happening? <laughs> he was speaking to widespread Crazy. anger. His content became highly emotional, making for some pretty embarrassing and disgusting on-stream moments. And yes, there's a trigger warning here for SA. What the fuck you think her political opinions are? Take one look at her fucking goofy ass bangs. This is what got him banned. The piercing. She believes in astrology. This is what I'm saying, man. Y'all are predictable com slash chad chad for 15% off of your purchase. Thank you to Raycom for sponsoring today and let's get back to the video. Ah. Sometime towards the end of the summer, as Sneeko was moving a million miles a minute with the reaction content, he decided to react to a video made by fellow YouTuber Chad Chad. In his typical, up. thoughtful, analytical fashion, Sneeko spent the majority of this stream mocking Chad Chad for her looks and discrediting her words on the basis of her being a woman. Up until a certain point where he does this. 
would and you know sister was so predictable you could tell by the way she's talking that she hasn't been properly mm -mm in a long time it's been a while so she's on the internet making this garbage video promoting all this feminist garbage to your lonely girls in the comment section what you really need chat chat is some mm, 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 mm. yeah shut up shut up with your feminism yeah come here come here mm -hmm. that's what you need and she's gonna go ha, ha, ha. that's what you need you need some sense back into you. Bizarrely is suggesting Chad Chad hasn't had sex in a while. Sneeko goes on to hump the air and act out what appears to be him having even as Chad's like pumping L's like what's happening rough sex with her now no one on the internet signs up to be talked about this way and in my mind Sneeko's gross comments can be summed up as nothing short of harassment as many former fans would agree the clip was sickening and no level of defense from Sneeko after the fact could possibly excuse it apparently that's assault which I think is kink shaming and that's that's how I like to that's how I like to get down if you think that's assault then you kink shaming me when I'm fucking a bitch, yeah, come here, come here, come here, consensually, obviously. I wasn't saying I wanted to do it with Chad Chad. I don't give a fuck about that hoe. I wouldn't, I don't want to touch her. I don't want you near me. I'm saying she needs that. She needs somebody to be like, yeah, shut up. Shut the, yeah, shut up. You don't know how to fuck a bitch. It's interesting that in this scenario, he defends his unwanted sexual advancements as consensual in a hypothetical world, but when it comes to another YouTuber, Brandon Buckingham, passively joking about having sex with Sneeko's girlfriend, it becomes a rape threat. And he said, I'm gonna R-word your girlfriend, bro. Uh, bro, literally said, I'm gonna R-word your girlfriend. See, Sneeko weaponizes certain issues and uses various talking points to his advantage only when it's convenient for him. I say let him fight, by the way, because that other dude is like fucking, I don't know. That other dude is a fucking weirdo, too. Not a sane person involved in this process. Yeah, let them fucking fight. Because that other dude, that other dude is a fucking weirdo loser, too, from what I've seen. Him. Just like the many times he's made fun of the trauma of others Reeks. while speaking at great length about the trauma brought on by watching his own girlfriend getting fucked in front of him at a sex party. You're mentally ill, you're struggling, navigating pleasure and joy with trauma. Trauma and guilt? Come on, bro. Bruh. I don't know, yo. I'm just not. And my girl's right here and she's like, eh. and I'm like, oh, yo, I'm like, like feeling traumatic thoughts, like seeing her with another person it's a lot i don't want you to reopen no, this what? obvious wound but like what what does that feel like no it's okay <laughs> it, it felt like somebody was like taking something from me like someone this was, was the most insane video i've ever watched like to this day bar none i think this is the real pivotal moment if we're being real Plating my property that's what it felt like Feel like. I feel like getting robbed like right in front of me. <laughs> like that's what it, yeah, it's like, I don't want it. Why am I looking? There's, I don't take any enjoyment from that. You're 18 in trauma? What, you didn't go to war? It's almost like he has no backbone, no concrete set of principles, and absolutely refuses to take accountability under any and all circumstances. Anytime he has the opportunity to apologize, he just doubles down. But actually, it's the women who can't take accountability, right? Men go to jail for this shit. Women are not ever held responsible for what they do in relationships. <laughs> I love that take. It's such an unhinged take, bro. It, like, Chad Chad was talking about it, too. It's like, women, um, like, there's this idea that just women take no account. Women have no accountability or something. Like, where the fuck's this coming from, dude? Incel Hassan Lamau? Wait, what? What the fuck does that mean? Always the victim. So women aren't held accountable at all, or? No, they're not. I think they should be. I don't yeah. think they are. They should be! But they're not, and they don't want to be. They like it. Are as much as men are. Okay, thank you for being honest, though. Sneeko prides himself on standing up to what he considers social programming, opposing all the soy boys, cucks, and bots who want everyone to remain the same by shaming and belittling everyone who disagrees with his worldview. Just staple this in your mind as a Hassan promotes this shit too. What is going on, dude? Why? What is happening in his chat? I'm not in a single one of these motherfucking videos. And his chat's out here fucking constantly. What is happening? I told you, dude, you make random chat cameos the whole vid. What is going on, dude? Every fucking clip. What goes on in this community? What, what is happening? Why? Why is this? What the fuck? Are they all right? What the fuck? 
to look up these people in your chat law. This is YouTube, so their YouTube names are different, probably. Holy fuck. Yeah, no, I am. I am a fucking landlord. I take it back, dude. It's exactly what not to be. This is what happens when you listen to the liberal brainwashing too much. You look like this goofy ass idiot. Yeah. Like, I guess you have a bunch of those stuffed animals. Well, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. That guy has nail polish on it. Like, and it's like, that's, that, they, of course you do. Framing his idea of masculinity as the only objectively correct one. Making anything else worthy of bullying. Bring bullying back. Bullying is necessary or else you turn into this dude. A little bit of bullying is necessary. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, imagine turning in the fucking Tommy in it, dude. <laughs> a beacon of uh, just a just the greatest example of failure that you could use, I think. Bro, if bullying turns you into Tommy in it, holy fuck, that's the greatest. If bullying stops you from being Tommy in it, we should never do bullying ever again, okay? Necessary. Chad, I just want to bully this guy. Like, <laughs> I know I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but even I can see the staggering level of cognitive dissonance at play here. How can you possibly hope to guide young men out of the matrix by forcing them to adhere to such a specific set of principles that only you deem appropriate? You're not as deep as you're pretending to be. You're not helping anyone escape anything. You're turning people into more active participants of the system you so vigorously claim to Pose. Don't tell me you care about male loneliness or men's mental health when all you really want to do is reinforce the very traditions and gender norms that have kept them down to begin with. Regressing society back to the 50s and advocating for such a narrow, limited view of masculinity is hardly the liberation from an oppressive hierarchy you think it is. But that's not what matters. All that really matters is being able to convey the idea of enlightenment. If you can convince enough desperate people that you're the only one who can help save them from a shitty existence, congratulations, you now have an army of religious zealots feeding out the palm of your hand. An infinite money glitch that Andrew Tate cracked long ago, and one oh, yeah. that Sneeko has been sure to exploit in a similar way, opening up a $50 course of his own with the Creativity Kit. Like, bro, come on, let me scam a little bit. Come on, dude. Which YouTuber said that? I'm not going to lie. He, he, he's got a lot of flow. Uh, he, he, he's got, I, I need to sue him for plagiarism. Okay. Like, that's like, I mean, that's like verbatim. Okay. The bars are a little bit different, obviously, because it's on the other side of the argument, but like, the cadence and the flow is <laughs> a little too close. Okay. When we visit the official website, we're greeted with a video message from Sneeko under text that reads, After nine years on YouTube, gaining over two million subscribers and getting canceled weekly, period, I've figured out the formula for anyone to go viral and make money from social media. So it's a course on how to turn a profit. Yes, yeah, just be a fucking... Relentless misogynist. Because this nigga's always playing second fiddle in every field he tries to mark in. Mr. Beast, D'Angelo, Tate, his girlfriend's boyfriend, you. <laughs> online. <laughs> How profound. Pretty much the exact mission statement of Hustlers University, except Sneeko has only a fraction of Andrew Tate's resume. At the very least, with Hustlers University, fans could look to Tate's credentials as a millionaire who traveled the world as a champion kickboxer as some kind of justification for why they were dropping so much money on a Discord server. Andrew Tate had material success to his name, at the very least. Sneeko, on the other hand, doesn't have near the 
kind of money or popularity to justify such a hefty entrance fee. He's just a guy who spent a decade grinding it out on YouTube before finally blowing up at a time when it became profitable to hate women. Maybe you're afraid to say because you don't want to get canceled, but bro, I hate the shit out of women, bro. Women are so fucking annoying. There's no secret there at all. Sneeko's success can be learned and mimicked for free. Much like Hustlers University, the creativity kit has been criticized by those who have tried it as being shallow and unnecessary. And much like HU, a lot of it isn't even taught by the man himself, with Sneeko's editor apparently taking the reins throughout a large chunk of the program. And when Sneeko does show up, it's to either spew the most basic advice imaginable or brag about meeting up with the crypto millionaire in Puerto Rico. I'm about to fly to Puerto Rico and meet up with this crypto multi-millionaire. A lot of people are impressed by the fact that I'm able to talk so fast because I'm challenging people. I'm making people think. It's creative, it's different, it's always changing, and that's why people like it. So basically, just like all of his content from the past year and a half, it's vapid and useless. And that's if you can even get it to work. I can't watch these videos because my internet is bad despite having 100 megabits per second download. And so I cannot gain any value out of them. I've asked everyone all the way up to Musa for a refund and the response I got was surprisingly rude and unhelpful. So I was forced to file a claim through my bank. You guys don't unplug kids from the matrix. You just plug them into your own matrix. And you know what happened? Post Wait, this dude literally fucking unironically thought that he was going to learn something. Not this guy, but the dude in that Discord server. Thought that he was going to fucking learn something? Come on, brother. The only thing you learned is a valuable lesson that most of these guys are sharks, okay? Don't pay for someone's Discord server like that. It's got removed. <laughs> the post got removed. Sneeko, Sneeko's product, Sneeko server, Sneeko team can't be censoring people who are going against their views. That, yo, that can't be the case. So if you can't access the course itself, that leaves you with a Discord server where most people just repost Sneeko's content. At least according to YouTuber Dantavius, who tried it out for himself. But one thing I noticed about Sneeko's server is that a lot of people are just reposting Sneeko's content. It's not exactly what I would call creative. That's literally Hustlers University. He's trying to do Hustlers University. That's crazy. It's just, that's what it is. He was trying to do Hustlers University bar for bar. And if you're wondering why so many positive reviews seem to exist out there, it could have something to do with a little something called affiliate marketing. Something I don't think Sneeko would have even heard of until his daddy Tate came along to hold his hand. You join the program, paste a little link in your bio, and suddenly you've made five bucks. Although the rest of it went to Sneeko, so. He sure is good at putting himself at the top of the matrix he wants you to escape. In fact, he wants it so bad, he'll even break FTC guidelines to push his course forward further. They're doing a giveaway in which they're giving two lucky members two free months of creativity kit access if they leave a review for the course. By the way, I'm pretty sure it's illegal. I'm pretty sure the people leaving these reviews are required by law to disclose that they left the review as part of a giveaway. It doesn't display the entire review, only the rating. So it's impossible to disclose that certain reviews have been part of a, a giveaway or a sweepstakes. It's essentially false advertising. But I think we all understand his desperation. Sneeko was hoping to make a fortune before the inevitable happened. As he saw with Tate, you- Let's be fair though, like, that is basically what they teach you on Hustlers University. Like, the true lesson out of Hustlers University is like, looking at Hustlers University and trying to recreate it. So it almost seems like Sneeko is the one motherfucker who saw the true lesson behind Hustlers University and, and went along with it and then made his own version. <laughs> uh, also, I love FTC guidelines. This is pretty funny. I, yeah, I don't think FTC violations are, or, or FTC regulations are going to take this man down. And even then, the only reason why Sneeko's uh, Hustlers University kind of worked is because, well, it didn't, but... It was, you know, in, in any meaningful shape or uh, form uh, able to generate revenues because he already had a pre-existing audience. YouTube can bring the hammer down at any given moment, especially when you're flying as close to the sun as he was. Sneeko knew a band could have been right around the corner, but even with the knives this close to his throat, the last thing he was going to do was back down. <laughs> you try getting rid of me and I'm still here. <laughs> They really thought they could Why are they saying Lazan? 
like in this like in this uh fucking even in this clip they're like like they're saying like Lazan bot. Like what what did I do? What the fuck did I do? I, I just I don't understand. I must have been talking about you during the years you didn't know he existed, like They really thought they could ban me. I don't care. I do care. But I'm still here. Hey yo, 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 you remember when they wanted to ban me? <laughs> You remember when they wanted to ban me? You remember when these pussies put on their Harry Potter glasses and said, can you please ban Sneeko? From what I've heard, he talked about you every day. Wait, really? This is where all the banned chatters uh, end up. Crazy. Gotta be a sad existence, man. Like... If there's only, if there's only one person who, who, I mean, if there's a person who's having like an even sadder existence and a fall from grace that Nico could have had, it's the motherfuckers in his chat that are just like bringing my name up for no fucking reason. That's sad. And it didn't work. <laughs> they can't stop me. They can't stop me, man. They want me to stop. They want me to stop going. They want me to kill all my... They want me to stop making money. They don't want me to do nothing. They want me to sit there and cry and be like them. Take an antidepressant, go to therapy. I'm still here. Suck my d as recent as this past September, Sneeko had accumulated a total of two community guideline strikes on his Sneeko channel. Although I'm not sure which two videos could have done it, between Why a Man Can't Become a Woman, Sneeko vs. Traumatized Woman Part 2, Why Whales Think They're Queens, and LGBTQ is Hypocritical and c You ditched on one of his high effort vids and called him an incel because of it? Dissed, you mean. Not ditched. Is that it? Is that a normal reason to fucking behave this way? I mean, if you think so, then that's fine. But also, don't you think that... I mean, maybe I was kind of right? Kind of seems like I was right. Kind of gross. Sneak half the motherfuckers... Bro, I swear to God. Half the time I call a dude out for something, they just make a YouTube video where they're like, no, I am the thing that uh, you said I am. But I'm still going to get mad at you for saying that I am that thing. It's so wild. And for a long time, I don't, think it, I don't think it happens as much anymore, but there was like legitimately a very long time when people would literally just say whatever. Like It's like the Kanye West thing, right? Like Kanye West would be like, oh, you're calling me anti-Semitic? That's really fucked up. Here's some anti-Semitic shit, right? A lot of people would do that as a YouTube video, like a 10-minute, 11-minute YouTube video, and it would get like 800,000 views. And all the comments were like, dude, you fucking owned Hassan so hard. I'm like, bro, did you watch the video right now? Not at the time. No, I don't think it's happening as much anymore. Or maybe I'm just completely. I'm probably completely unaware of it if that is happening. But no shot. One of those vids got Andrew K. No, I'm talking about fucking uh, the Abba and Preach ones that were like, how dare you call us transphobic? Here's me being transphobic. And then. <laughs> the fucking videos would get like 800k views and everyone's like, dude, he just owned you. <laughs> dude, they owned Hassan, Hassan so hard. And it was like, okay, so I guess you guys agree with him. Like, I don't know what to tell you. You should definitely check out his videos about you now. Fuck, fuck no, bro. Why the fuck would I do that? Why would I do that? I used to do that all the time. That only creates a, a larger fucking community of haters. Nico was almost asking to get hit. After all, he had been cozying up to right-leaning ideas and personalities for a little while. Introducing his once non-political audience of kids to the likes of dog whistler Tucker Carlson and its self-admitted fascist creep Matt Walsh. With Sneeko reacting to his transphobic documentary What is a Woman Live on Stream? Making sure to give it a ringing endorsement and at least three separate uploads, I guess. For a guy who hates repetitive content, 
content, he sure, I mean, you get the idea. But perhaps the most dangerous examples of Sneeko's pandering came from his friendship with racist, unironic neo-Nazi, Nicholas J. Fuentes. In case yeah. you're a normal person with a life outside of the internet and have never heard of Nick Fuentes, allow me to ruin your day. What, people calling me gay because I've never had a girlfriend? Nick Fuentes is an extremely far-right, white Ugh. supremacist Christian nationalist who lurks among the most sexist caverns of the internet spewing racist, anti-Semitic propaganda for the most touch-starved, social outcast losers on the planet. He opposes women's right to vote and dabbles in Holocaust denialism. He attended the Charlottesville Nazi rally and spoke before the January 6th Capitol attack. He's Ugh. compared himself to Hitler and has been placed on a federal no-fly list. This <laughs> Remember when this guy wrecked you in a debate? Dude, I love this. Thanks, man. You said based? I love when a Nazi gets fucking pointed on, on screen and immediately some fucking dumbass is like, I like this Nazi. <laughs> no, have fun, dude. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. That's just a self report, brother. Thank you, though. This is a man Sneeko considers to be, quote, autistic. But like you literally just saw this guy go, he spoke at the, he spoke at the fucking Charlottesville rally in front of other Nazis, is himself a Nazi, and he went, dude, that was so sick when he owned you. And <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay level smart and appreciates Fuentes for inspiring fast-paced high-level conversations in his own words. I think Destiny and Nick Fuentes are like autistic level smart. I like those fast-paced high-level conversations. The same pipeline that me and Fuentes are going down talking about bots and red pill and about who owns the bro that's oh my god oh god there you go the appeal the fan base dude the fucking fan base right there the banks and about who controls the media uh he's like a nazi right no he's a white nationalist he's not a nazi <laughs> Somewhere along Sneeko's red pill transformation, he was introduced to Fuentes and quickly took a liking to the man before bringing him on stream to indoctrinate his young fans with anti-Semitism. That's so you look gross. At the administration and his cabinet is full of Jewish people. You look at Big Tech and legacy media and the people that run them, it's full of Jewish people. Hollywood, full of Jewish people. And you can't they control talk the media, about they control the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but in, in GTA, Jews control the, the media and the, and the money. All the villagers in Minecraft. <laughs> Vomiting purely hateful conspiracies to an audience with zero rebuttal from Sneeko. To Fuentes, Sneeko was nothing more than a useful idiot, taking advantage of his hospitality to spread dangerous, incendiary language amongst a brand new and particularly impressionable demographic. And then you got average IQ. That's another one of these so called red pills is that, you know, different groups have different IQs. So on average, Chinese people have the highest IQ. White dude, I just... Like the lamest dude, too, which makes it so much... Like, you gotta be extra... You gotta be extra motivated to look at a guy like this and be like, that's my guy. He's really hitting all the good notes for me. Like... I often talk about how uh, human beings are, are lizard brain, right? We look at shapes and colors, and we really hyper-focus on the aesthetics. And on the aesthetics front, like, this dude is such a relentless goober. So, like, finding this dude's content and being like, man, this is for me. This speaks to me, really. I love this shit. I mean, it's... Oof. White people have a high IQ. Have You're saying average. Haitians have the lowest, the lowest like Hispanics and Blacks have the lowest IQs? Uh, yeah, Blacks are the lowest on average, and Hispanics. Wow. Are. On average, on average, that's true. Though. Wow. I mean, I, if you have, send me, send me a study about that. Sneeko sat there slack jawed like a mouth breathing sheep as a terrorist freely got to claim that Jewish people control all the money in the world. Africa. I'm glad that this guy said he's not a Nazi. By the way, on fucking. Adam 22. Very cool. Bro, we don't need to have irrelevant fucking losers like this on any platform, okay? Can we just not do that? It's just... It's just so silly. Like, it's not like this person is like Richard Spencer in his heyday. You know what I mean? Like, let him fucking rot in dark corners, okay? 
Why? Like, why? Why do people, why do people platform these motherfuckers? It's so nasty. But why gatekeeping, though? Wait, what, what do you mean, why gatekeeping? Why am I gatekeeping fucking out and about Nazis from, you know, being introduced to a larger platform? Yes, that is the one instance where you should gatekeep, actually. No, for sure. Because remember when we talked about, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a one second off, okay, to cool down a little bit. Remember when we talked about uh, the, the Kanye West, like, pulled out the Jews in the media list, and there was someone in the West sub ever um, uh, subreddit that was trying to, like, go through and parse through the details to basically fucking counter the, the Jews control the media narrative in the weirdest way possible by being like, well, it's not actually all of them are Jews. It's, it's only some of them are Jews, right? Like, okay, but when you say that or when you're doing that, when you're actually like addressing the, the anti-Semitic screed, usually all you're doing, especially when it's not like super popular or super prevalent, um, you're, you're basically making it a little bit valid, right? Because you shouldn't be arguing against the list of Jews uh, that are executives in media on the basis of like, actually, it's only 20% that is Jewish and not 90%, okay? You should be arguing on the, on, the, uh, on the premise that like, it's ridiculous that you insanely put together a list of people who you suspect to be Jewish, okay? But the moment that you actually start having a conversation about that, it's like you already, you already threw the premise that it's like somehow weird that there are Jewish executives in media out the gate. Like you already, like you're making it seem like if it was 30%, then, that, then the list would be valid. And maybe we should be asking some questions. You know what I mean? No, that's not a thing. Is poor because black people genetically have lower IQ and that these differences come from evolution. All insane and absolutely false garbage. Citing all kinds of bullshit studies and blatantly misrepresenting data while Sneeko refutes nothing. And I was saying that I'm against race mixing. I think that that people should marry their own kind. My race matters to me, my identity matters to me. I want my kids to look like me. I want my grandkids to look like me. It's embarrassing and sad to watch a man who was once admired. Okay, the irony there thought. is that like, you have a Hispanic white supremacist, you have a Hispanic Nazi talking to a mixed race individual. Like, okay, like, and now he's also a white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> like what happened here at a certain point you gotta be like this is a little weird you know anyway thoughtfulness and tagged be absolutely walked all over and used by an anti-semite who has only the worst intentions for sneeko and his fans in mind you don't have a lot of original thoughts because the hat on your head dictates what you think for the most part go back to synagogue stop trying to fucking be a youtuber bro go back to synagogue stop trying to be a youtuber what the that's, fuck, bro? These later streams suggest a dark that's end crazy. point for Sneeko's reputation and career as we once knew it. While he continued to celebrate his place on YouTube, even after the numerous attempts by other YouTubers to get him banned, Sneeko's channels were finally removed the morning of October 3rd, 2022. Whether due to his comments about- Wait. Sneeko got banned from YouTube? What's the most offensive thing he ever said on there? This shit's getting fucking crazy. Bro, what are you talking about, Adam22? He literally, apparently he said a lot, dude. What the fuck? What do you mean was the most offensive shit that's been said on there? What hasn't been said on there? What's inoffensive? You are trending in the screenshot? Yeah, that's, don't worry about that removed the morning of October 3rd, 2022. Whether due to his comments about Chad Chad, videos made to attack and delegitimize disenfranchised groups, or his newfound love for neo-Nazis, Sneeko's repeated violations of YouTube's guidelines was always bound to catch up to him. With the platform's decision marking one final depressing chapter in Sneeko's long, unfortunate character arc. They can, they can do whatever they want. So if they, if they want me gone, it, it's... I mean, I'm just gone. That's just how it works. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit bummed out. I cannot show up on the emergency meeting later tonight. I was supposed to do uh, the emergency meeting on Tastebeats on Rumble. The reason I can't go on the emergency meeting, I I'm a risk. 
I'm a risk to have on. I was talking to Andrew for a long time last night. That dude, that dude is saying I'm a risk. It'll be Justin Waller, Andrew, and Fresh and Fit. And not me. The story of Sneeko is a masterclass in what can happen when you let the wrong people influence you. Although Sneeko may claim over and over that he's always been like this, saying the same stuff forever it may not be the humble brag he thinks it is. It's normal for your ideas and worldview to grow and change with you. In fact, being able to look back on your past self and cringe is one of the best feelings in the world because it means you matured. In the case of Sneeko, it seems only his worst opinions are the ones to have followed him throughout the years, with his takes on women and feminism being the most particularly consistent, only getting less charitable once it became profitable to say such things. No matter how he cuts it, Sneeko knows he benefited from a growing trend of hating women and becoming more reactionary online, abandoning whatever sense of decency he once had in exchange for instant success. Sneeko's biggest problem though is that over the course of this journey, he managed to abandon everything that once defined him in a positive way. He lost his ability to reflect inwards, unable to- I think a lot of people forget that like when you're a content creator, uh, you are still just as susceptible to misinformation. You're not above it, okay? You're still just as uh, easily influenced by shit that you see, um, especially when there is an additional motivation to continue going down a rabbit hole because your audience is forming in that in that direction. You're not immune to propaganda, as I always say, but, you're, but it certainly makes it even harder uh, to have immunity from propaganda when you are generating revenue off of uh, leaning into it, okay? And, and a lot of people think like, oh, well, these guys are celebrities. They're content creators. They're content makers themselves, so they should know. Like, they should know better. Nope, they don't. Same could actually be said it for yourself. No, absolutely. You're not wrong. I mean, I, I think you're probably trying to say that as an own, but you're literally not wrong. I am also susceptible to propaganda as well. I check myself quite frequently. I think I do a decent job, uh, especially with media literacy and also teaching others how to have some level of media literacy. But I'm constantly thinking about the top of the hour ad break. And at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And that is propaganda when you think about it. Like the segues. <laughs> and if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky, dude. Hey, ad breaks are about to go up, too. Ooh, here's a woman ad break now. Sometimes you fuck up like with media framing on Eastern cultures. What? I want to see that fucking ad break rate. I want to know. I want to know what that debate uh, was rated as. New contract tomorrow. Where's the, where's the ad break? Where's top of the hour bot? Where's top of the hour bot? To show that familiar sense of self-awareness his previous fans once subscribed for, he made a conscious effort to trade thoughtfulness for petty bickering and controversy because that's what people wanted to see. His original mission statement went from seek truth through funny to seek validation through ignorance. By becoming this dense shell of the man he once was, he gained an entirely new audience to go along with this brand new persona. One that he can now only only embody over on third-party platforms which attract the worst kind of people imaginable. I don't think anyone should have sympathy either. Ignorance at that level is nothing but a choice. Sneeko made up his mind on who he wanted to attract with the message he put forward. And all I can say now is I hope it was worth it. 8.82, let's go. Extent, except for my family. I know how much of a prick I look like when I go full out. So the side of me is never revealed in public. It stays in the comforts of my home where people are forced to accept me. But over time, I've seen how much people hate being around someone who consistently thinks he's right and won't stop until he is, so I mostly keep it to myself. Right now, it's in full swing, but in five years, I hope it'll be gone. I piss even myself off sometimes. When you see rappers or basketball players who think they're the most important and special people in the world because children give them their endless, overwhelming fanboy support, that's what I feel like all the time. I think I'm so special and better than everyone else because I think I'm smarter. Just picture how narcissistic that is. This side of me is my alter ego, and he's named the Sneeko. 
That's crazy. 